Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another live event with uh, Digital Wood Carver. My name is Laney Shaughnessy. I'm going to be your host this evening and uh, co-hosting with me tonight, as always, on Wednesday nights, Burl Tishner, owner of Digital Wood Carver. How are you doing this evening, Burl? We're doing good. It's been one of those, uh, seems like show days seem to be our busiest days uh, with everything in the background, but uh, we've been working feverishly this uh, today to come up with a show for you on the fourth axis. Uh, got some cool projects to show you. We've been uh, running some of them today because these projects take a little bit longer to run. They're like the, you know, reliefs where you got a, you know, that 16th inch ball nose uh, bit there it takes a little bit of time. So we're going to show you some of those. We'll run a little bit, get in the depth. And I know, um, Laney, I'll probably turn it over to you some and do a little more of software kind of showing uh, the fourth axis. The fourth yeah. axis is a phenomenal, uh, you know, uh, option for the uh, digital wood car. We've had it since uh, the beginning when we sold our first unit. It had a fourth axis on it. And we'll talk about a little bit later, maybe on uh, how the fourth axis and why we designed it what the way we did. But uh, phenomenal things you can do, but it is not for um, people just starting out. Exactly. And uh, for those of you that are joining us and are new to CNC and new to Digital Wood Carver altogether, uh, we have our DWC 2440 model unit. Uh, can you hear me? I sure can. I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me, bro? Bro, can you hear me? <laughs> All right, let's do an audio check real quick. Um, make sure that everybody can hear me. Check one, two. Can y'all hear me? All right. Um, with that, uh, you guys just type in the chat whether you can hear me or not. Burl says he cannot hear me, um, but uh, hopefully he can. All right. So everyone else says they can hear me. <laughs> so, Burl, hopefully you'll be I able to try going out and coming back. All right. Sounds good. All right. So while Burl is going out and coming back in, let me tell you a little bit about the uh, 2444 4th Axis unit. Our DWC 2440 model unit comes in three different packages. It comes as a benchtop package without the stand. And for those of you that are uh, camera left, my camera left, um, but uh, the 4th Axis without the stand, just the unit, is called our benchtop package. Now, when we add the stand uh, to the unit, that's our 3 axis standard package. And then when we add the rotary attachment, which is over here, trying to point behind me here, uh, that is the fourth axis rotary attachment. Now for the 2440 model, uh, the fourth axis rotary attachment has a 37 inch uh, length cutting capacity by uh, three, or uh, by, I'm sorry, by four inch diameter. And uh, welcome back, bro. Uh, you. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what what was going on there. I I just couldn't hear you. I tried uh, resetting my uh, earbuds and mic, so apparently that took care of it. Sorry about that. So I was just explaining about our four axis units cutting capacity, 37 inches okay. in length by four inches in diameter. Uh, now, uh, some uh, of our users that have our 5100 and our 4848 unit are actually able to also mount that particular fourth axis attachment on that those CNC's as well. It's designed for the 2440 uh, model, but uh, it can be adapted to those two units. Now it's not adaptable, of course, to our mini carver, but our mini carver does have its own fourth axis unit. And just to give you a ballpark figure, our unit, uh, if you, let's say you guys and girls have the three axis unit already and you wanna add that fourth axis attachment, it's an $820 attachment. Uh, if you had the mini carver and wanted to attach its fourth axis, uh, it's a uh, $500 attachment, $499. Uh, so we do have those options for all the machines and our bigger units as well. Our standard 2440 fourth axis fits on them also. Now the fourth axis is unique for the digital wood carver uh, because it mounts to the side of the CNC uh, and uh, the router actually pivots 90 degrees uh, to the, uh, to cut over on the fourth axis, Burl's showing you the setup right now. So you can see our spindle is pivoted 90 degrees, uh, to the table. And, uh, so that way it can carve on the fourth axis. And that is due to our unique swivel plate, 
uh, that the spindle is mounted to. The swivel plate has two positive stops, zero and 90, uh, which allow you to uh, get right back to where you need to be uh, when you're uh, switching from milling mode, which is what we call carving on the table, to fourth axis mode. Now, Burl's got a piece of um, cherry, uh, I believe, on yep. the table, and he was doing- Yes, that's what- Yep, he was doing- yeah, We're doing some rounding. And uh, earlier today, we had we had all of our best intention, guys, to have, uh, we created, our ambitions overshot our time frame. Uh, we created three fourth axis projects uh, to get underway, but we got one of them done, which is, oh man, we, uh, we, we carved it in a piece of mesquite, very dense wood, but no, poor did turn out beautiful. Burl, can you show that? Uh, and then I'll show some pictures of the process of that. Uh, can you show that piece of mesquite? <coughs> Let's see. He might have lost audio again. <laughs> hey, Burl. Uh, yep, he went back out. He noted, he realized immediately he lost audio again. So uh, he's having just a little bit of audio issues tonight, but that's all right. It's all part of being live. But uh, let me switch over to our share screen here. Uh, and uh, I will show you guys uh, some pictures of the um, mesquite. And let's see if we can, let's get uh, backed up some here. All right. <clears throat> So we started off with a, let's get Burl back in. He's popping back in on us here. All right. Welcome, Burl. We started off with a piece of mesquite that, uh, you know, uh, when I first designed it, I designed it for a piece of hickory. And then uh, during the carving phase, we realized that it wasn't the piece of hickory. It was mesquite, which is much more dense. Uh, oh, that is heavy, hard stuff. Um, let me just cutting the length. <laughs> yeah, uh, when you cut it with a miter saw, and that thing gives you a polished finish just off of the end, and that sucker is like a piece of rock. But uh, beautiful. But I sorry, go ahead and let me explain. Um, I don't want to give away the what it's going to look yeah, like at no, the end absolutely. there. But, uh, well, when, uh, once we uh, got it on the table, we went through the rounding tool path. And let's, uh, I've got to zoom in and out on the images as we go through. Uh, this, the, on the rounding tool path, let's bring that up close. This is where it takes our square block and it knocks off the four corners and then it trues the piece up uh, to round uh, to whatever diameter we uh, dictate in the software. And so this is a picture. And when you're on the fourth axis, there's some sawdust to be had. It's just like being on a lathe. There's some uh, hey, yeah. piles that Burl's got right there on his uh, bent. And uh, all right, let's um, switch over real quick to the next photo. And uh, now yeah, I thought about all those lathe people. They'd love the fourth axis because it makes lots of chips. They're all Absolutely. over the place. And one of the advantages, ladies and gentlemen, of the fourth axis is we can do things with the fourth axis rotary attachment that just cannot be done on a traditional lathe not taking any way from anything away from turners and lathe uh, operators and all, but we can right. do statues, we can do table legs, we can do uh, spindles and all kinds of decorative designs and things we can carve and everything. And they're just those things. And that's one of the advantages. Now this photo you see on the screen here, now we're getting into the roughing stage. This is where all the little fibers and everything are starting to rough up because it's, it's got that quarter inch end mill and it's hogging away the waste material uh, to get it out of the way for our finish cut. And on our finish cut, we used a 16th inch tapered ball nose bit uh, to just bring out the detail. And here's another look at the rough cut, the roughing phase. So those, all those pockets and voids you see uh, in here, those, that's where the bit is going down and removing that waste material, getting ready for that finish cut. Now it looks a little rough in this stage because of all the fibers, you know, you have woods that have some fibers and stuff, but boy, does it clean up nicely. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's move on to the next photo. And um, here is now the beginning stages of the finishing where that ball nose bit is just starting to wrap itself around and it's wrapping around in a, if you were standing behind the CNC looking at the motor, it's wrapping around in a counterclockwise motion. So that bit is just coming around, clearing out this bead here, and then starting to work towards that main area. And then on the last uh, 
photo. I believe it's the last photo. Let's see here. Uh, yep. Nope. This is not the last photo. But uh, the ball nose bit is continuing to work around as it, again, it's turning in that counterclockwise motion and it's not a lathe. It's not high speed. It's not spinning real fast. That, that fourth axis is systematically turning as that router is traveling back and forth, uh, doing the carving in and out, back and forth. And that, that, that fourth axis is just spinning that, uh, you know, um, uh, piece that we're carving yeah, based this on the design and what's needed to be turned. And uh, sorry, yeah, bro. One of the things that you have to realize, oh, you're okay. Uh, I was just going to point out the difference between this and a lathe. The router is what's doing the cutting. That is your cutting tool uh, versus like a single bit on a lathe. Yeah, absolutely. And the uh, now what you're seeing here is our rounded stock. You're seeing the back side of it. Burl's kind of giving us a teaser here of what the finished part looks like. Uh, but this is the backside, all nice and rounded. And you can start to see the 3D model over here. Uh, and in our last photo, uh, as we swing forward and spin this around, uh, we end up with our uh, very nice piece. Now, this piece, uh, just to give you an idea of what the model is, because uh, the Mesquite has that nice heartwood. Uh, and also, Burl, would you call that... Uh, bark what what's the um outside edge that white and dark i think i lost burl again burl you still with me <laughs> we're gonna lose burl will be in and out a couple of times tonight but uh the um that uh, nice heartwood and if we pop over to the model that burl was cutting this is the model laid out into a flat view uh here and uh if i wrap it up on our cylinder, you're going to see it kind of be just uh, pixelated here for a second, but let it catch up to itself. And uh, there we go. Let's cut. Let me spin this and kind of cant this a little bit. And uh, it takes a second for that pixelation to uh, catch up to itself. Every time you move a 3D model in the Aspire software, it pixelates and then it regroups. But a uh, really nice assortment of uh, basically a vine of roses and everything was that model and uh so that's what we're seeing here we're seeing the uh, uh hearth up here with the vine of roses and it doesn't look like much uh in the image because uh you know we took the images with our cell phone but burl uh has got a uh how you doing burl burl can you hold that piece up to so, your camera uh to yeah yeah i apologize we got a overcast today that's uh, apparently causing havoc with our uh, wi-fi and internet ah that's okay we understand uh the picture doesn't really do it justice and i was talking about that white wood now we have the no, dark doesn't. heart wood but what would you call the white wood is that the is there, there's a term sap for wood it. or the sap outside wood. Wood. yeah sapper so the, it, yeah. Fitting right on the tips of the roses uh, and, uh, everything. And right on the tip of that, I want to call it the hearth at the top, but, uh, really makes it kind of uh, pop. Now this is straight off of the CNC. There has been no cleanup at this point. Uh, no, right. I literally have not even brushed. You see just a few little fuzzies here, but that extremely hard would, uh, give it a good, I mean, that's a, it was a good finish on it. Yep. And, uh, so if Burl, you know, uh, spent some time on this project, you know, and, and did some cleanup, uh, then, you know, it would just uh, really pop, especially with a nice clear coat on there. Now, Burl, I'm going to pop oh, yeah. back to the last screen for a minute or the picture screen, because I want to just show off one more photo. It's a photo that I'm quite proud of. Uh, but uh, let's see if we can, uh, oops, <clears throat> get in here. Oh, you oh. You little dog. Hold on a second. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can get in here and zoom in on this. Uh, this is a fourth axis uh, turning that I did uh, for a little uh, kind of a side table uh, uh, out of a piece of walnut. And every part uh, was made on the digital wood carver, the base, and also this very detailed spindle here. Um, and then, of course, our top lid. Uh, and everything. And so you can really rock the boat and do some uh, uh, amazing things with it and all. Let's get Burl back in and uh, and all. And I just wanted to show that picture off, Burl. Uh, I thought yeah. it was a nice one. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice, uh, you done that, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago or a year or so. 
ago. Uh, you don't have in the picture. That's a whole nother subject. You have some beautiful inlay on the top of that too. If anybody has seen that. No. Uh, yeah. And I don't have that photo available, but yeah, we did some inlay on the top. Now, uh, if I were to change that table again, bro, I would get rid of the zebra wood and make it all <laughs> walnut with a nice maple inlay. So maple. Yeah. Uh, live yeah. And learn it. Now, uh, guys and girls, you're asking questions. So here we go. Once again, the capacity of the 2440 fourth axis attachment is 37 inches in length by four inches in diameter or eight inches in diameter. Sorry. Eight inches in diameter. I said four earlier. It's the four inches on the radius. But uh, it's eight yep. inches in diameter. So eight inches. In, oh, my goodness. That's a massive piece of uh, spindle or whatever. That would be a table leg and all. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, the so and I do apologize, uh, uh, Paul Handwork, for that confusion on that fourth four inches in diameter. That's the radius. Eight inches in diameter. Right. Now, the yes. mini carver capacity is roughly around, I would say, 17 to 18 inches. It's a smaller because it's our smaller table and all. 17 to 18 inches on the length with about i would say two and a half to three inches maybe or two yeah. what do you what do you think bro up to three maybe yeah two we generally say three inches uh when it comes to that yeah and that is yeah. the actual diameter three inches on the mini carver and all um so great questions uh you know glad it's eight inches in diameter guys uh sorry about that confusion now <clears throat> um burl when I first got my uh, 2440 and my fourth axis, uh, there's been some design changes uh, over the yeah. years. You know, yeah. The fourth axis used to have almost what you would call a fixed tail sock, not really fixed, but it was secured with four uh, bolts and wing nuts. And as you needed to adjust the distance from the headstock, you know, depending on your stock length, you would remove four wing nuts and you would slide that tail stock back and forth. It was just this last year. Uh, that we added a sliding tail stock. For those of you that know about lays and all, and you're used to that sliding tail stock, uh, the fourth axis now has a sliding tail stock on there. Uh, it comes standard with a live center and a spur drive. Uh, and those come standard for carving on centers. Uh, and um, from there, uh, you can, if you wanted to, you can add a uh, chuck. Uh, we do have four jaw chuck and three jaw chuck accessories. They're about $119 for those accessories. And you see those threads right there on the head that Burl is uh, pointing at, or not pointing at, but he's got the camera at right there. Those threads are the 1-8 uh, tapered threads, uh, uh, the standard 1-8. So you can actually attach standard lathe attachments, such as possibly... Uh, you know, uh, your own Nova chucks and things like that, or, or face plates or whatever the case may be, uh, can screw and attach right to the digital wood carver fourth axis. So, uh, if you were taking a part from the fourth axis over to the lathe for whatever reason, polishing, you know, or what have you, uh, and all you could absolutely do that with that because of that built in, uh, thread, uh, and adapter. Now, earlier models, if any of our older customers are in the audience, our earlier models, it was a, um, it was a uh, oh, three, quarter three quarter 16 thread. And, uh, you know, to get those additional attachments, we did have an adapter that adapted from that three quarter 16 to the one eight. Uh, but Burl, you know, what was it last year that we, we, we made that conversion, those two conversions on there? Yeah, yes, the beginning of, of last year, we did that. Um, and there's some things behind the scene. Number one, we give a lot of features to the customer. But on our side of it, we got the motor up inside the uh, control or in the box there. So this will lay flat. We don't have anything underneath uh, on the underneath side. And, um, you know, so it makes it a little cleaner when it comes to that, uh, you know, look of, of it too. But the main thing is is making that slide, you know, so it goes back and forth where you don't have to physically take it out. But uh, been a nice, uh, nice accessory to it. Um, even on some of the old, old machines, we didn't have the mortise and taper one. So if you want to put uh, like a pin uh, mandrel or something inside there, it does have that spur drive is a mortise and pins, uh, 10 and one. Um, so you can just it's a universal, um, you know adapter or a universal uh, port in there. 
Exactly. And, and, uh, you know, guys, that is a, you know, uh, a, a good point. Uh, someone last week when we mentioned that we were going to be showing the fourth axis and we were showing the laser the week before that, they were like, Hey, does the laser work on the fourth axis? And, uh, you know, to do pins or things like that. And it does. And that's one of the things we wanted to show you tonight, but unfortunately we didn't get there, but, uh, it does. And if you have your pin mandrel, if it has a number one Morse taper, uh, you could, uh, very easily take that pin that you've turned on your lathe and bring it over to the fourth axis, uh, put that pin mandrel in there and, uh, do a laser engraving, but also at the same time, because we do have that eight inch capacity, we also can get down. And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we could actually carve a pin on our fourth axis. We can get down to that, you know, yeah. type of detail and you can really make some unique pins when you got a fourth axis because, body styles completely change you know you can add in some really custom details and all depending on the size of the bit that you use and everything so um and uh yeah morris taper number one and uh yeah mark mark uh mark heard the uh mortise and tenon that you can't that you accidentally stumbled on burl and uh he was saying hey. morris and taper yeah <laughs> more taper but uh we now, got, yeah keeping you on your toes yeah now uh, a, a good question. It's a question we always get with the fourth axis. Can you carve a gun stock on the fourth axis? And yes, we can. Uh, but we can also carve it on the table too. It all depends on what you're needing exactly. to get. Pearl has somewhere he's not, I don't think he has it available. Yeah. Yet. But uh, if you give me, uh, put me off the screen, I'll look for it here a little bit and see right. if I can show it's a, it's a mistake. It's got some parts in it. That's uh, not good, but, Give me a second here and I'll see if I can find I'm it. Uh, off the screen if you want to search around there. But, uh, you know, when it comes to gun stocks and everything, we have a customer that has one of our four by four machines and that's what they specialize in is, is gun stocks. And they carve it on the flat table, uh, carving one side, uh, then uh, flipping that and carving it on the other side and everything. But yes, you could carve a gun stock on the fourth axis. Um, now, the one thing, uh, the two things that are different between our two different fourth axes, mini carver and 2440, um, are, <coughs> excuse me, our mini carver carves over the fourth axis. The fourth axis actually mounts on the table of the unit and the router carves over the top of the fourth axis. On our 2440, the fourth axis mounts to the side of the table, so it can always stay attached, and the router pivots 90 degrees uh, to the uh, to the table. The router pivots 90 degrees to the table, so it can carve on that fourth axis. And um, you know, if uh, we wanted to uh, carve that uh gun stock it's a matter of taking the model now that i'm not going to get into any modeling in the software and everything but you know you've got to be able to design that model in a, a wrap type fashion because when you are uh carving on the fourth axis you are wrapping and uh burl uh if uh there we go let's uh get burl back into the mix of things <clears throat> hey burl welcome back here oh wait hold on i got you muted burl Let's try. Let's try this again here. All right. Hey, Burl. Welcome. There you go. All right. So Burl, yeah, actually, this one has some defects. <laughs> he grabbed this a has some defects and, <laughs> but, uh, it does. Uh, this one was, um, done on the fourth axis. You see the end here, but, um, you know, since then, um, you know, like you say, you can do a flat and then, uh, flip it over and do the other side. Uh, on that that's uh that's what the yeah customer that, that you were talking about earlier for those of you that are like oh man i want to get the fourth axis uh just to you know be able to do gun stocks let me tell you i'm just going to say this that what burl said it's not for a new beginner you know you want to crawl before you run the fourth axis has a little bit of a learning curve not a bad one when you're doing wrap things like carving and engraving on spindles and all but when you're wanting to get into statues or gun stocks or things like that there is a learning curve because it's not just the machine operation it's also the design side of things being able to get that design in there and stuff so don't think that you're going to grab a fourth axis tomorrow and start gun turning gun stocks unless you're a savant with the software <laughs> which i'm not uh, you know, it's, it's going to take a little bit of learning curve, but not saying that it can't be done. It's just, it's a, it's one of those things yeah. that skills grow 
uh, you know, just like when you're turning, you've got your turning tools, you've got your lathe and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. And you're starting off making little honey dippers before you get into walking canes and things like that. So there's yeah. a learning curve and all. Um, now, uh, Burl, we're going to uh, jump into a couple of more questions here. Uh, if you put a three or four jaw chuck, and let me pull Bruce's question up here. Um, if you put a three or four jaw chuck, how do you cut the end to go into the three or four jaw chuck on the lathe? Now, when I used to do it, I used to actually round the end so the chuck could grab it. Uh, but I think, a, is it a three jaw or four jaw that you don't necessarily need to round the end? It'll grab on all four corners. Four. The four jaw chuck. So uh, yeah, and, mm -hmm. there, there's a, a few things that you can do. And, and certainly, um, you know, you guys out there that run the lays, you, you probably got a lot of those tricks more than I do when it comes to that. But one of the things with the three jaw is you can put a hole in the end of it and, and expand out uh, instead of grabbing the outside of it. So if you want to, you can take a four spinner bit and uh, bore a hole in it and expand out. Yes. Um, the four jaws uh, are, you know, so that you can go around the square part of the, you know, end of it, uh, of having a flat on each side. Three is is generally designed for, you know, the round stock when it comes to that. Exactly. So, and I uh, round mine off on a lathe. Uh, you know, I had a little lathe that I would round off the end so the, the chuck could grab it and stuff. But uh, you don't really necessarily need to do that. I mean, there's a lot of ways. I've seen people with band saws. They just take on the first you know, inch or so of the piece, cut the four corners off, and kind of create almost an octagon, if you will, so it can grab it and things uh, and all. So uh, good question, guys. Uh, thank you. And uh, Mark Manow, yes, that, hmm, laser with fourth axis for engraving pins. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, you guys quit rubbing it in. We wanted to show you that tonight, but it was just- I know. It's- um, yeah. now here is the, a question from crystal. Uh, it says, can you carve a true 3d model leg and post and have a flat back attached, you know, to attach to like a cabinet or a table? Yes, you can. Uh, because, uh, crystal in that design, uh, if I, if you don't mind, bro, I'm going to pop up my screen yep. first and yes. uh, to kind of show, um, the, uh, the design software. And I'm going to bring Burl and I uh, kind of together so we can see here. Um, if we were to uh, turn this part here, you'll notice that it's rounded on one side. But if I turn it to the back side, we have a kind of a diamond square, you know, one of the corners and all. Uh, so this could, when the ends get cut off, this could be kind of uh, an inset corner piece, a decorative piece on a piece of cabinet and everything. Now, if I unwrap this uh, part, uh, into the 3D model. Basically, what you're seeing here, let me zoom in nice and big here, uh, is the flats, the flats actually re are represented by these curves here because you got to think about that, that flat plane that we're drawing in is getting wrapped around 360 degrees. And so when it gets wrapped around, these little curvatures here, when it gets unwrapped, should I say, it kind of looks almost like a curve. But the this edge here and this edge over here when these two flats, when it gets wrapped up uh, and everything, those two edges come together to create that corner, that back corner. And those two little curves you saw were the two flats here. So you can absolutely do that. It's all part of the design uh, and everything. And um, uh, so, yes, if you were carving like table legs, most table legs uh, have uh, two, like a back corner that has uh, that goes into where the apron is and everything and all. Uh, now, Burl, uh, could well, you show the, the two statues there? That, that He's got the two statues yes. here. Um, this is yeah, and one of the things I wanted to point out is it's just like what you were talking, Laney, was literally if you've got that model, you just simply put that square on that model. It goes all the way around, and it can do all three, all 365 degrees all the way around. So you can do whatever shape as long as you've got a model for it. Um, you can do whatever shape that you want all the way around it. Correct. And the, uh, the modeling, uh, you with the software, like if you guys and girls, uh, I always, uh, you know, I like the fact of Aspire being able to build models and stuff because I could create my own table like profiles and all, but it's not required. There are so many models of balusters and spindles and table legs and statues and everything, even that little, uh, uh, what is that called? That's the Medusa, not the Medusa, uh, Madonna. 
I think. Is, <laughs> but uh, um, I thought it was Venus, but I, mean, Venus, I don't. Know. It is Venus. I don't know art. You know, Venus my right. <laughs> that little statue that he showed you there—that was an actual model that you know you could purchase online. So for those of you that have desktop or pro uh, and you're like, oh, I can't build a model. Well, you can bring in that model into the software. That Rose model that you that I you know was showing on the screen earlier, that was a, I did not create that. That was a model that was imported in uh, and everything. So you have that. Uh, great things. Um, so Bill, just to reiterate, what is the learning curve of the fourth axis? It's not high. But it's right there in that mid range. There's a it's, <laughs> it, it's peak in the high because there when you're doing something simple, if I was carving the name Bill Zala on a fourth axis spindle, uh, all I have to do is create a rounding toolpath and a V carve toolpath, and the software is gonna wrap it for me. If I'm creating a corbel table leg with ball and claw foot, well little bit more of a learning curve especially if you're in the designing of it but if you there's all like again and again to reiterate there's models out there for these things but um getting it getting the machine zeroed out uh zeroing out the x and y and and the z and the a and everything that is rinse and repeat it's the same steps at the beginning of every job it's going to change based on the stock diameter however it's it's the same step it's the designing side of things and getting those models right and all that stuff that makes it a little bit of a higher learning curve. Now, when it comes to the fourth axis for individuals that are used to CNCs, the thing about the digital wood carver is our axes change slightly, okay? Not slightly, they change. So uh, if uh, Burl could pan back to the machine for a minute so I can kind of uh, reiterate here. Uh, and I'm going to pull this, uh, the Burl's camera up large. You're going to hear me talking, but you're not going to see me. But the normal Z-axis where that router is raising up and down above the table, that becomes what's called the A-axis. And the A-axis, if you want to relate it to anything, relate it to a tool rest on a lathe. You're going to bring that router up or down, and you're going to center that bit onto the center of the stock. Once it's centered, then you zero out the A axis and that's where that A axis rides the whole time. So that up and down, getting that bit centered on your spindle uh, is the A axis. Now, the Y axis on a CNC, which is typically for us that uh, side to side motion on the digital wood carver, well, that becomes the Z axis because now the router is 90 degrees and it's moving towards the fourth axis and away from the fourth axis. And so the Y axis becomes the Z. So if any of our users have a 2440 and they have the Y, then they, as soon as they turn that router 90 degrees, it's automatically now become the Z because it's moving that router in and out, in and out towards whatever's to the mounted to the side, in our case, the fourth axis. Now the Y axis, which is that wrapping, that rotary, that is the fourth axis attachment. A lot of people refer to it as the A axis, and we even refer to it as the A axis when it's not in use. It's that fourth axis. When it's not, when we're in mill mode, that is the A axis. But once we enter fourth axis mode, that becomes the Y. That spindle turning back and forth clockwise and counterclockwise, that's our Y axis. And then, of course, X remains the same. That is where that router is traveling down the length of the spindle. Uh, and uh, carving, you know, rounding it off, doing the carving and all, but that remains the same. The x-axis remains the same. So when you can get one turning of a fourth axis on your under your belt and all, and you get, you know, your orientation of the x, y, z, and a, then it becomes it kind of clicks. Okay, uh, and uh, you guys and girls think of it this way: if that router was pivoted straight up and down. Take your piece of wood that was be clamped to the table and take your router, pivot both of them 90 degrees. And now the Z axis is moving towards and away from that router. So Burl's got that router started back up. He's going to do a little bit of carving while we're talking here and uh, and all. And while that is carving in the background, it's doing a rounding toolpath, knocking off those corners right now. I'm going to answer some more questions. Uh, and um, uh, to give you guys an idea of the sound, uh, we remember we have a we have a. Uh, a spindle on there, but that fourth axis is carving wood. So be uh, sure to, I'm going to just unmute the microphone, Burl's microphone, just for a moment so he can hear it. And 
Oh, hold on a second. He's not part of the stream. Let me bring him in part of the stream just for a second so I can unmute his microphone. Oh, okay. They uh, Burl muted himself. Um, yeah, hey. sorry about that. Uh, okay, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I got you. I my got screen you. is... Uh, my screen's a little funky, so I may have to hit him back out and no start problem. again here in a minute. But I thought we would if watch, let people watch it run a little bit in the background as you're doing some of your talking. And I'm going to mute the back now, bro. I just want them to hear the sound of that. All right, yeah. All right we're going to mute him back. Uh, so what you're hearing is uh, that bit, you know, uh, you know, tearing into that area right now. So it's a quarter inch in mill. It's rounding it off and all. So let's get back to uh, some additional questions. Uh, can your machine copy my custom carved legs or does my design need to be programmed? Well, George, uh, that's a great question. Uh, it can copy uh, your carved leg, but you're going to need the digital probe to do that. Uh, and, uh, depending on your, uh, carved leg, uh, depending on the detail of it, that probe could either do a side probing profile where it, it uh, probes out the profile and you can bring that profile, uh, DXF into the software and have it, uh, the software extruded into a table leg, 360 degrees around, which would require the Aspire software, or you can probe the entire leg all the way around. Uh, and just uh, export that probing file out as G code and recarve it. Now, I will tell you something about the probe. It is a long process. So uh, don't, you know, it's hours, could even be days, depending on how much detail you want to get out of that duplication. But to duplicate a part, whether it's on the flat table or on the fourth axis, that is the digital probe. So good question on that. And uh, Crystal, thank you. You're the best too. I appreciate those compliments. I eat those up all the time from people. All right, Bill, let's see here. Uh, is Aspire worth the money if you're working with the fourth axis? Now, I'm going to bring um, uh, uh, my personal opinion into this. Uh, when I'm using the fourth axis, uh, my specific use is making table legs uh, for farm tables and things like that, you know, for my tables and all, or doing a, a decorative turning and stuff. And, um, I, most of my legs, I model myself in the software. So for me, uh, the Aspire is absolutely worth that upgrade money for that $1,300 upgrade. If you have VCAR pro $1,650 upgrade, if you have desktop, uh, but, uh, m my software, my Aspire, not only just for the fourth axis, but also my carvings. Um, I'm able to build models in that Aspire software bill, and I'm able to sell those model files that I create. Uh, and so my software pays for itself. And therefore, uh, if I was using the software strictly for just being able to do fourth axis, it would be a big bonus because I could customize my own designs and everything for my table legs and everything, but not required. But if um, I'm going to be using the Aspire all the way around for all of its features, not only the fourth axis, but also creating models and things on the on the table and then being able to turn those models around and sell the model designs to make extra money, let the software pay for itself, then in my opinion, Aspire is absolutely worth it. OK, but if it's if you're just doing it for the fourth axis, it is absolutely worth it for the fact of being able to customize your own legs, but it is not a requirement. OK, so that's how I'm going to answer that one. Um, Mark Adams, uh, Mark Adams up from North in our Canada area there. How you doing, Mark? Uh, I believe that's the correct Mark Adams. Uh, can you import a 3d model from a program such as fusion into pro to V to carve on the fourth axis? Yes, you can. Uh, you're, you can import a model as long as it's uh, one of those model file formats, STL, OBJ, PRJ, uh, 3dx, you know, and about six others that I don't know off the top of my head. You can import those right out, out of a 3D modeling program such as Fusion. Uh, you can bring it into your Vetric software and uh, wrap it. Uh, basically, it wraps that model in a 360 degree orientation and you can create uh, your tool pass off of it. So great question, Mark Adams. Yes, the answer is yes to that. The short answer is. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Bob Hutchinson, I have the original. Can my fourth be upgraded to the sliding? Bob. 
that is one thing that it cannot be. Uh, and Burl will uh, come back when when we're when we get Burl back in here. Uh, uh, I'll have him kind of reiterate why, uh, because the um, the design body has changed dramatically uh, to where there's a center groove, and you might be able to see it peeking through underneath that router as it's traveling back and forth. And that center groove uh, allows for the sliding tail stock. Uh, I don't even have the sliding tail stock, Bob. I still have the old style. Uh, I haven't upgraded or anything like that. In order to upgrade, uh, Bob, it would be upgrading the entire fourth axis unit. And uh, again, that would be a judgment call on the behalf of the user, uh, you know, on if they want to spend money on the upgrade. Uh, but um, unfortunately, because of the bot the new body style and everything, it can't be adapted to the old style. And if I'm incorrect, when Burl comes back, he will correct me on that because uh, he's listening to everything I say. Uh, so great question on that, Bob. Um, now, uh, Bill Zala about the Aspire. Uh, Crystal, you probably saw it in the chat, but she says absolutely worth a lot of money with the tools and features that you can do in the Aspire software. So thanks for jumping in on that one, Crystal. Uh, Mike Glad, Mike Glad, do you have training videos uh, on setting up a uh, the machine to switch to the fourth axis uh, and switching back to the three axis? Well, Mike, that's a great question. And um, uh, Mike, I love your avatar, uh, your picture, and everything. Great haircut, man. I wish I could, you know, rock a haircut like that because uh, I need one so bad with a, with this COVID nineteen. But uh, uh, Mike, uh, the video that I have on setting up and working with the fourth axis is a older video. It's on our older model unit, so it's one of those videos that I absolutely have to update, and I'm going to be doing that in the upcoming week because uh, next week. For those of you that follow Spindle TV, we are going to be working on the fourth axis. We're going to be designing in the Vetric software. And then on Thursday nights, uh, we're going to be in the shop. So you're actually going to see me take my standard three axis uh, setup and convert it to a four axis by rotating the router, getting the stock set up and zeroed out. So you're going to see all that live on Thursday night if you follow Spindle TV. But as far as a video out there, there is one video. It's called how to set up and use your fourth axis. Uh, but it, you have to take an account. It is using the older CNC USB controller software. And it's using our older uh, style uh, unit. Uh, and uh, some things have changed uh, since then. So I need to do an update on that. And I will uh, in this upcoming week after I do our fourth axis class. I will be making a video on uh, the setup and use of the fourth axis that can be on the Digital Woodcarver YouTube channel for you guys and girls to see. So thank you, Mike, for asking that question. Um, and uh, William Wallace, uh, if you have a bigger dust collector, how will that work? All right. So, <clears throat> Mike, you're, what you're, or William, sorry, what you're referring to is the dust hood is on the bottom side of the router. Uh, and it's the standard inch and a quarter dust hood. Well, when you have the two and a half inch dust hood, uh, you simply take that vacuum housing, that clear acrylic housing, and you rotate it 100 degrees to where it's at the top when that router's pivoted 90 degrees. That means it'll be on the left side of the router when you're in three axis mode, you know, uh, carving on the table. And when that router pivots 90 degrees, uh, it will be on the top. Uh, and uh, my uh, axis, you'll see if you join uh, Thursday night uh, in the shop on Spindle TV on YouTube, my uh, dust hood is the two and a half inch dust hood uh, and mine is on the top because that's exactly what you do. You just rotate your dust housing 180 degrees. Okay, good question, William. That's a very important question uh, and all. Uh, and uh, George jumped in there and, uh, you know, he said, you know, I flipped mine to the other side. So very good, George. Um, and... Uh, there we go. I think I have went through all the questions. I'm going to scroll back up and see if I missed any. Um, I don't believe I did. <clears throat> Tim Miller, what happened to the setup video that was online? Well, all of our setup videos used to be on the Digital Woodcarver website. Uh, and we've got a, a new guy, uh, Jake, who's doing amazing things with our marketing and our website and stuff. Uh, when he changed some things around, uh, uh, the setup videos on uh, how to unpack and set up your uh, Digital Woodcarver, uh, how to set up your fourth axis, how to use your fourth axis, those videos that were on the website are no longer there. 
Uh, I need to go back in uh, this week and put them back on, but you can find them uh, by typing in uh, YouTube. You can find them by typing in Digital Woodcarver Assembly, right? That'll show you the assembly video. This is in the search bar, Digital Woodcarver Fourth Axis. If you type that in on YouTube, it'll bring up those videos and everything. Uh, but eventually, um, uh, Tim Miller, uh, eventually those, uh, videos will be back on the website. They just were, we're revamping the website, making it look so much more hip and cool. You know, we're trying to get in with the 2020s and all, and, uh, make it a little bit more easy to navigate when you're searching for things and stuff. And so those videos have been, um, uh, not misplaced. They're just not on the uh, live right now. And they, they're in the back end. Uh, so they'll be back up shortly, but I would like to update uh, the fourth axis video before it goes back live. But you can see that by on YouTube, guys. All right. So uh, let's see here. All right, Burl. Hey, Laney. Hey, yes, sir. Let me get uh, Burl back in here. And uh... I tell you what, um, you know, this is live uh, TV or live uh, streaming here. If right. you want, um, I was mistaken on your cylinder. There was a finished pass, so it did a pretty decent job. There's a couple little corners, and we talked about trying to do the laser. We can do one of two things. Uh, you can stop me for a little bit, and I can put on the laser head, or we can do a V-carve um, on this cylinder. But uh, well, it would take me a couple minutes to get it changed out. I tell you what, Burl, you know, this is the whole great thing about live. Let's take two seconds and let's do a vote for, we got 92 people watching us right now. So ladies and gentlemen in the chat, uh, the live chat, would you like to see us do a laser engraving uh, on the fourth axis on this cylinder that Burl's got? Or would you like to see us just do a simple V carve uh, on that cylinder uh, with a, with a V bit and everything? So if you could, could you uh, in the chat, uh, start putting in laser or V carve and uh, we will let the public decide bro. Cause we got a big group watching us and uh, uh, I think it, and Burl, uh I can already tell you right now, uh, laser. <laughs> okay. So, well, if you'll take my screen off, um, give me just a few minutes here and I'll see what we can get it pulled up and uh, Hey, you never know what, uh, what will happen. All um, right, hopefully so, we'll... Burl, stick around with us, Burl. You're still on the screen for a minute, but stick around with us. Burl's going to set up the laser. Uh, it's going to take just a few minutes. Now, Burl, remember that laser file this time. Uh, I got it right this time with the laser toolpath and all. Uh, but uh, he's okay. going to set that up. So you're going to be uh, talking with me. So if you do have questions right yeah. now, anything, Digital Wood Carver, Fourth Axis, and all, now's the time while Burl's setting up. Burl, we'll see you in just a few minutes. Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, <coughs> mute Burl's mic for a minute uh, while he gets all that set up. And so laser, laser, laser. Uh, Jimmy A, we have one V-carve. Uh, Sam Bailey, one V-carve. Tim Guba, one V-carve. All right, you guys and girls uh, that are asking for the V-carve, uh, laser's kind of one out. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I would like you to join me on Spindle TV. Uh, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, uh, we're going to be doing a fourth axis project. Uh, and then Thursday night, Thursday night, uh, we're going to be in the shop. So I've been doing Tuesday nights design Thursday in the shop carving on the CNC machine. So we're going to be doing fourth axis this coming week, uh, you know, a week from yesterday. We're going to create that uh, uh, fourth axis project. And then Thursday night live at seven, we're going to be carving. So you're actually going to get to see the setup, how to convert over to a three axis. Um, and, uh, how to convert to a three axis and Burl just popped back in on us for a second there. <laughs> um, but how to convert from a three axis to the four axis mode, uh, how to zero out the machine. And then, uh, we're going to do some carving, you know, so, uh, you're going to get to see that and everything. So, uh, for those of you that wanted to see the V carve, uh, version of that, join me next week and you're going to get the whole gamut. So you'll get to see that and more. So we're going to do some carving on the fourth axis and all. So, but uh, lasers one out on that one, guys. Uh, so unfortunately, we're going to go with the majority on that. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> Travis, we can always set up training on the fourth axis with you, correct? Absolutely. Now, for those of you that know, uh, you know, with me, uh, you can uh, schedule training 
one-on-one -on -one training uh, with me. We do it virtually. We're on the phone, but our computers are connected. The training session is absolutely, uh, or is actually recorded. So you get a video recording of your training session at the end of the session and everything. Uh, and we can, you can set up a training with me. Now there are three ways to set up training with me. Number one is uh, pay by the hour and it's $45 an hour. Or number two, you could be a subscriber uh, uh, to Spindle TV training. Uh, $10 a month gets you one hour a month of one-on-one -on -one training and two free project downloads each month. Uh, or you could do annually. Uh, it's $110 a year. That's basically 12 months for the price of 11. Uh, and uh, you get 24 projects to download for that year. Uh, they get emailed to you, not downloaded, but I call it download. But you get 24 projects throughout that year that get sent to you, cool projects that I designed myself. Uh, and you get 12 hours of training, one-on-one -on -one training that you can use throughout that year, however you want. It's not just one hour a month. You can you can back to back, however, however you want to do it, but you get 12 hours to use throughout that year. And uh, to schedule a training session with me, uh, digitalwoodcarver.com, click on the menu, learn option and go down to training and the appointment scheduler and subscription uh, setup and everything is on that page. Now, your subscription, just uh, got to make this disclaimer, your subscription for Spindle TV training, one-on-one -on -one training is with me, Spindle TV and Laney Shaughnessy, uh, Digital Wood Carver uh, is a sponsor of it, but they have no obligations uh, to, no financial obligations, no uh, anything to the Spindle TV training. That is a one-on-one -on -one agreement with you and I, when you're paying, uh, you know, I am handling all the credit card transactions, everything. Uh, Burl does not have anything and digital recovery. I have no responsibility financially or otherwise it's uh, spindle TV and you are is that contract that, uh, that, that subscription contract, if you will. So, but great question, Travis, sorry about that. I just want to get all that out there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, Brian Roby, Brian Roby. Sorry. I almost pronounced that wrong. If I order the 2440, would I be able to pick up in North Carolina? Yes, uh, we have a vendor. We have a couple of vendors. Uh, we have our Woodmiser ASC. I believe I said that right, or ACS, ASC uh, vendor in uh, North Carolina. And we also have uh, Klingspor Woodworking uh, in North Carolina. And we, 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 we want to encourage you to, uh, you know, we support our vendors. Okay. Uh, we want to, you know, encourage you to, uh, order through them. Uh, but you can absolutely call in, uh, or, you know, uh, you can order online digitalwoodcarver.com or you can call our toll free number and order and, and all, but, uh, you know, we, uh, do want to make sure that we, we are giving our, our vendors shout outs and supporting them. So, uh, if you're in North Carolina, Definitely, you know, there's two places there uh, that you can go uh, to order from or you can order direct from us. And, yeah, we could uh, work out an arrangement for drop shipping. Uh, I cannot quote what the shipping would be, uh, you know, on, on a unit like that uh, to North Carolina to be able to pick up there. Uh, that would be something uh, I would have to talk out with our ASCs and all. And uh, then the shipping charge would be um, adjusted accordingly. So, but yes, Brian. Yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to, this detail, trying to uh, fill in as much detail as I can. Um, Paul Handwork, thank you very much. Great training. And no matter how you do it well, worth the money. So monthly or annually, uh, we got one of our subscribers here uh, throwing a shout out for the training. So thank you, Paul, for that. I appreciate you. Uh, and uh, also Bruce DeGarmo, thank you as well. We're worth the time and money for training with Laney. I thank you guys. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> And uh, Ronnie as well. Uh, I'm gonna hey, I'm gonna take these kudos, guys. We're gonna throw that up on the screen too. The thing is excellent. It takes his time to explain all uh, to you uh, and works right on the screen. So I have control of your computers and your machine, and uh, it's like me being right there in the shop with you. And it's a great experience because after it's all said and done, that that training is recorded. You get a video recording of your training session uh, that you can refer to at any time. It gets emailed to you and it's your recording. It doesn't go out on our website. None of that stuff. That's yours. That's, that's your training between you and I. So it's a great, uh, great little benefit, uh, that video recording and all, you know, uh, for that live one-on-one -on -one training. And, uh, you know, so yeah, check it out. Digitalwoodcarver.com. Learn menu, click on learn, go down to training and, uh, down at the bottom of the training page, you can subscribe. Uh, all right. So, <clears throat> 
Dave Garbett. That's here. Hi, Lainey. Are the files available for download on Spindle TV for subscribers? Uh, Dave, no. Right now, currently, the files are getting emailed. And uh, the files for April, they're actually going to go out tomorrow. The April models, that are, the, are not models, but the project files. The two files are getting emailed out tomorrow for, for the month of April to all the subscribers. Uh, David, I haven't put, uh, I haven't created the uh, back door for subscribers onto the website yet, spindletv.com, uh, because uh, I'm waiting for my, um, what's it called, SSL certificate to make the site more secure. Uh, and when I was in the process of doing that, and then COVID really kicked in, COVID-19, and so the company I was working with, a uh, little bit of a delay. So once that gets up and running, there's absolutely going to be a gallery. Uh, that, uh, you know, uh, the subscribers can go to, to download from projects from, you know, to a month and stuff. But currently right now, those files are emailed to all subscribers and, uh, the April, uh, files are uh, coming out, uh, going out tomorrow and everything. I waited till the last day of April for this one, because it took me a while to figure out what projects I wanted to make for you. Cause I design each of the projects myself. Uh, you're getting a custom project by me, uh, two per month if you're a subscriber. So they'll go out and, um, and all. And uh, Dave, on your past projects, if you subscribed in the month of March, uh, you would have gotten March and April coming up, uh, it, you know, earlier. So you should have your emails with your files and everything in there. So look there. All right, guys and girls, now's the time to ask questions. Uh, we're going to uh, we're, we're Burl is getting set up to do a laser engraving. He'll be back with us in just a moment. He's attaching the laser right now. Uh, and, um, uh, on that laser, he's going to get it set up to, uh, do a laser engraving. I've, I've already created the design for him, did some prepping. And while we're, I tell you what, while we're, uh, um, while we're, uh, working on this or looking at this, let me switch back over to the screen for a minute, the computer screen. Uh, and uh, show you what Burl is going to be carving. And uh, what I'm going to do is, while I've got the screen up, I'm going to wait for Burl to give me a thumbs up to tell me he's ready. Uh, and um, I can see him. So, uh, you know, he, all he has to do is give me a thumbs up, tell me he's ready. All right. And uh, what we're going to be doing is, uh, this is what a fourth axis design. Let me bring Burl in here. Uh, Burl, come on back to the screen there, buddy. How you doing, Burl? Um, so this um, is we're doing okay, but I do have a question for you. Okay. Um, do we need to change the calibration on the um, on our diameter axis because we're on the round instead of the other? Yeah. No. 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 Because the you're talking about the calculator, the step calculator. Yes. It was based off of the round. Okay. It's the diameter, the, the, the steps per unit is based off of what that was rounded to. Now, if you want, now, if, uh, if you want to change it, you can absolutely do that. Just do the step calculator. It'll automatically update it and you can run. So you would just have to measure the diameter. Well, it is working and it's doing what we're wanting it to do, but it's carving at a 45. What's that? I've got it milling at a 45. So that it's going to be turning back and forth rather quickly. I don't know, or not quickly, but <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll we'll run it. Uh, I think it's a little strong right now. It's uh, our cherry's a little dry, but you go ahead and talk about that. I'll turn the camera on, and uh, we'll let you let it run, and uh, we'll explain what's going on. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just a real quick uh, cap on the software here. In the Vetric software, we're doing a rotary job, right? It's a rotary job. The cylinder is eight inches in length and the diameter is two and seven eight. Uh, we zero out from the center of the material is Z zero. And Burl, that might be why it's strong. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's zeroing out from Z zero, but uh, there's no um, zeroing on the laser. Uh, it's two inches from the, the face of the material. But uh, we are got that rotary, rotary here. And if we come into our sheet, it's just a flat sheet. It's got the circumference of that cylinder unwrapped into a flat sheet. And so I've got two designs here. I've got digital wood carver. This was the V carve design for those of you who wanted to want to, going to do V carve. And then we have a laser. I made it smaller because the laser can do intricate detail and everything. So I got the laser going. 
Now, if we go over and look at the tool pass here, uh, there's absolutely a rounding tool pass. This tool pass uh, comes through, and that is what knocks off the corners of uh, the cylinder, and that's what Burl was running a moment ago with the router bit. He was knocking off those corners to round that stock. Uh, and then we have our uh, V-car, um, Toolpath, which uh, is funky when it's wrapped here. Uh, let me unwrap it. Let's unwrap it there. There we go. And uh, so that V-carve, if I were to preview that uh, V-carve cut, for those of you that wanted to see the V-carve, here you go. If I were to preview that V-carve cut and uh, then wrap my cylinder back up, uh, basically uh, it's going to, those letters and I'll let it regenerate. Uh, it takes a second to regenerate there. I've got my resolution set to extremely high, so it's going to take a moment to regenerate. Let's see if we can pivot it there. Oh, I had it and I moved it. Give it a second there. It'll bounce back. Uh, but this is the V-carve here. Uh, and uh, then I have a pocket toolpath, which is going to be the laser engraving, and we'll leave that one for Burl. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is get out of this screen, and I'm going to go to Burl's camera and make it full screen. Uh, put him in solo layout mode. Let me uh, bring him up. And so what we see here is that laser engraving, that router, it's carving at a 45 degree angle right now. I have it rastering back and forth at a 45 degree. Uh, I like rastering at a 45 degree. A lot of people do offsets uh, uh, where it goes round and around and around. But uh, and what Burl is saying, uh, what Burl was saying about the heaviness uh, in all is um, the detail uh, underneath the digital, the DI and everything is a little heavy and burnt uh the reason being <laughs> is i do not uh we did not set the steps uh you know uh probably but burl when you knock off that after that 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 afterburn if you took a little bit of sanding it'll come right back uh i think uh, you had it you had it at 80 percent um this little six watt laser was smoking it um, oh. i'll be honest with you in that cherry it was flat burning it. I've got it clear down to 20% and we're still probably a little bit heavy, but it's okay. doing an excellent job. The other thing that we had is uh, you had it based <laughs> off the radius and um, uh, I had to go in and recalibrate zero to be that uh, 1.4375 off from the, the wood. So a couple little things there, but once I got that toned down, that sucker is looking good. It's actually yeah, it doing is. good burning in good and what burl come out when he said 80 percent the laser uh has a power of zero to ten and eight being 80 percent of the power is very high uh and uh so that laser was burning that cherry it was just 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 cranking a deep deep engraving on that dry cherry so what burl did is in the controller software is he cranked it down to about 20 percent power and uh, got it dialed in, and now it's doing, you know, a, a proper engraving. So little things like that. I believe, Burl, uh, truth be known, uh, it's the first uh, Axis laser engraving you ran? That's the first ones I've ran. I don't know about yourself. Yet. That's not up in digital with Carver Land. Uh, but uh, I have not done in fourth Axis. So you guys and girls, first experience. Uh, Burl, uh, you know, and me seeing, you know, it carved on the fourth axis. So you're getting your word, but we're all seeing it together. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, it's looking good. Now, the low part, that was uh, just a setting issue. Too much power for that dry. Uh, too much power and everything. So, uh, just the dry. And, um, okay. So, uh, here we go. Uh, great question. This uh, just a quick, bro. I got another pop up. It's kind of a girl. Uh, camera, uh, you know, from a subscriber, uh, can we sell editor change the spindle subscriber's file results? Uh, not the files, of course. Yeah. I make those files for you. You're going to make them uh, to carve, give away, 
sell from and all, those are your models. You own the right to them. Uh, you pay for them with your subscription uh, and pay it for you. So you can absolutely alter them. You can uh, you know, turn around and sell your projects and everything. Uh, the only thing that I do ask is that you don't sell the files. Um, unless it's a model file or something like that, you know, you know, you can, but uh, the design, when you carve it, sell away, have a fall and ball at the, at the, at the parks and all that, the, 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 the craft shows and all, um, uh, and, and Bill Zala, yes, you can adjust the power of the laser, just like Burl had to do. Like we said, that was running at 80% power. That's what I set it up for 80% power. And that laser was just beaming into that uh that cherry and um so the 80 percent power is a little bit overkill i should have uh, toned it down but burl was able to quickly go back into not the vetric software he did that change uh in the uh the spindle software the uh CN planet cnc us or ah, planet cnc tng program uh and uh he was able to adjust that power setting in there uh on the fly but you can absolutely do it in the software as well but he was able to do it on the fly so very good looking cut there uh so great question and yes bill you can adjust that um yes now uh mark now burl uh, there's always the we have safety out there and also let's uh let's see what mark says here as a 30-year ehs professional i like to remind everyone of the potential danger when you rotate the laser 90 degrees for fourth axis even though only six watts, it can still cause damage. So you got to make sure before you turn that laser on that it is pointing at your material. You do not want that riding high and, uh, you know, uh, have your uh, spouse or coworker or something in the shop and you end up shooting a laser into their butt or something like that when you got it turned to the fourth axis. So you've got to use your common sense, guys and girls. you got to make sure you use nice. the safety. And uh, you yeah. make sure that laser is pointing at something solid, like our spindle here. And when you zero out that A-axis on the center of that spindle, you're good to go. But you, don't, you do not turn on that laser until you are set. And you check and you triple check before you turn it on. It's all, it's all yeah. common sense and safety, guys and girls, in the shop. Uh, Mark, thank you for bringing that up. That's a very, very good point. Uh, and I need the, the Mark, I is the biggest okay. thing is looking at eyes. Yes. And let's, we'll talk about that too. But Mark follows up with this makes me wish I had a laser with the fourth. Axis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we Chris, can help you out there. Yeah, we can help you out there. Uh, you can purchase and uh, uh, crystal. Uh, that absolutely is awesome. It is uh, very awesome to see that. Now, uh, what Burl said is the eyes, the guys and girls. Now we're watching this through a computer screen. Uh, and everything, but each digital wood carver laser comes with a set of safety glasses. It also comes with a protective laser shield that velcros around the laser. Uh, it's a tinted shield to protect your eyes from that laser. Uh, you do not want to be looking at it uh, because it is radiation. I mean, your eyes are very important. You want to have your laser glasses on and you definitely want to be using your uh, laser shield that goes around it. Um, and uh, now the um when we are uh working right now burl's got the laser shield off so we can all see the glories of the laser engraving on the fourth axis but if burl was in his shop on a regular basis he would have the safety uh you know shield on there because he's not always going to be walking around with his glasses on and that safety shield is basically a secondary uh protection barrier so uh he can look at it and and the shield is blocking that laser beam so um all right, let's see here. Uh, George, uh, oh, that's a good point, Mark. That is a very good point. But George Planick here, um, and I'll get back to Bill. Uh, the TNG software manual feed and speed adjustments go in steps of uh, 10% if you adjust it lower the increment. Uh, correct. The, uh, the um, speed and feed, uh, the, the feed rate on the TNG software and the spindle speed, which controls the power of the laser, is adjusted in 10 percent increments so when that was running at 100 percent 80 percent power you know 100 uh, percent what the g code was reading uh that was 80 percent power burl was able to adjust that spindle speed down from 100 percent down to uh what do you got it set at burl 20 percent uh right there he's got it down to 20 percent uh and um that brought it down to 
uh, 20% power. Uh, it's not controlling the spindle because there's no spindle running. It's the laser is controlled by that. And on the feed rate, he's got that feed rate running up to 140%. He's got it going um, faster than what I had it running in the G-code. I only had it running like 45 inches a minute, Burl. Uh, and, uh, so he's got it cranked up. So it's probably running a good, you'll see it tack out, you know, when it's running, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's maxing out about, um, uh, you can't really, it can't really max out on its, uh, feed rate because it's moving such short movements. It doesn't have time to ramp up to that feeding speed. So very good. Um, I have a standalone laser with a rotary axis. It's pretty cool. And yeah, Bill, those stand we, we sell uh, 60 watt and 90 watt standalone laser machines. Uh, and with a rotary axis, it's very cool. Uh, it's very cool. And um, uh, as a little bit of humor in there, uh, Crystal, no, that laser is not a lightsaber. So no Star Wars fighting with it. <laughs> you know, you can't just uh, shoot someone in the tush if, uh, you know, they're standing behind the fourth axis. You've got to use protection and all. Uh, let's see here. Uh, George, uh, it is adjustable to lower the increment of steps by 10%. Let's say five steps. Yes, sir. Yep, it is. So great questions and great, uh, you know, uh, reception there, guys and girls. And now you can see... All right, I want you to look at the first part of the wood carver. Uh, you can see where my settings, which I did to them last week, my settings were extremely high, running 80% power on that dry. And you can see that burning. When Burl made the adjustment in the software and tuned in that carving, look at the D and then the word carve and the rest of that digital and all, how just nicely detailed that is uh, and everything and all. So adjustment tuning in and getting tuned in to your feed rates, your power settings uh, with a, with your carving and with laser engraving, it's very important. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. And for me, never carving on a fourth axis, I set it to the settings that I would, you know, kind of run if I was on the table on something, but Burl was able to quickly adjust that and it's looking really good, Burl. So. It is. We'll let it go off there uh, by itself. Especially being that, um, you know, we're stream, uh, you know, what worse can happen? Catch on fire and, uh, you know, we uh, <laughs> uh, have something going here. But I blew all the dust out of the way, uh, so pretty confident. But uh, not bad. Two, two minor things there, but, um, you know, we we're over, uh, able to overcome those two real Very quick on the fly. And uh, it, it gets, uh, and we'll get a shot here at the end. I was going to say, Laney, we've gone a little bit longer. I thought this might be a shorter yeah, session hour, tonight. Hour, but uh, Hour and 12 minutes. Uh, uh, that is wrapping up on the last few letters and everything. But, bro, I do want to say something. You brought it up a good point. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you that are that do are working with a digital laser or a laser of any sort, it's wood burning. Okay, we are burning wood. Uh, and you want to be you know, mindful of that. You never want to leave your laser unattended. I have all the confidence in the world to leave my spindle running. And I can go in the house and eat dinner while I'm carving a carving and all. But you really want to be around that laser you do not want to leave it unattended because we are we're dealing with fire and wood and things like that so you, you use common sense use you know your, your your regular shop safety practices whatever they are and uh you're going to be fine like burl said once we got it tuned in you know no problem but if he would not if he would have walked away uh in that burning so intense and everything at that beginning you know uh, it, it, you know, it could have very well arced up or something, you know, but uh, he was able to uh, recognize the issue, adjust it in the software and get it right on track. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's what you got to do. You got to adapt, overcome, you know, uh, observe, overcome and adapt, whatever. However, they say that in the military. <laughs> <laughs> well, Laney, I wanted to point out one thing that we haven't touched on tonight. Uh, yeah. You had done this um, quite a while ago, but... Uh, you know, doing some threads. I know we pointed yeah. this out uh, or went over it a couple of times. This is a nut that you made, but the screw or the external threads was made on the lathe, and that's something else that you can do. I'm trying one-handedly get this nut off of there so now, that you can uh, now we can Burl tell said, them how we did that. Yeah. Now Burl said lathe, but he meant fourth axis. It's not a lathe. lathe fourth axis. Fourth axis. Uh, you guys, uh, yeah, you're rubbing <laughs> off on me. The uh, the threads of that little bolt there were carved on the fourth axis uh, as a uh, as a spiral cut. You, if you burrow pan to the left for a minute, that spiral piece to the left, 
Uh, so that is a spiral cut, ladies and gentlemen, right? So it's where it's, uh, it's cutting at a spiral. There's a pitch to that, like a thread pitch, right? Uh, based on that bit and all. Well, go back to the bolt. This is a spiral cut with a V bit, a 90 degree V bit to create that thread pitch. And that pitch of that, that, that spiral determines the thread count. And then the nut was actually carved on the table, the CNC table using a side V cutter. It's a, it's a thread cutting bit. Uh, basically think of a V bit that cuts out to the sides uh, and uh, it does a pocket cut cutting the threads for that. And so that's a very cool project. Uh, perfect burl for making yep. things uh, like invices for workbenches, you know, the threads and stuff. Yes. Uh, or oh, yeah. you know, uh, games or something where you got to, you know, thread and unthread thing, <laughs> whatever, you know, part exactly. Of together yeah, everybody likes wooden threads. Um, you know, I, I've seen them in, in offices as name pieces and stuff. And I was going to, I'm grabbing a, a thread cutter uh, bit so that it, you can see what, uh, what that is. And I'll show everybody here in a minute. But, now, um, and then we'll show a final gonna, picture. Before you switch around, bro, let's answer one last question for the day. Uh, what yep. round bit do you use to square to round? Well, Burl was using a quarter inch end mill, but you can use any size bit. Uh, we actually kind of like the bowl, the bowl and tray bits because they're bigger diameter and they have the radiuses on them. So they're they're actually great for kind of going from square to round the bowl and tray bits, uh, but you can use uh, end mills or whatever you know size diameter to get from square to round. And would you normally sand before you lasered? Uh, no, uh, uh, Burl, I I would say no because that spin, that rounding tool path actually does a pretty snazzy job of getting that spindle nice and round and clean uh, if you got your settings right. Uh, so no need to sand before you laser. Uh, I would do a little light sanding after lasering in case there's any flash, right? Any flash and all. And can you keep the spindle yes. running while you sand? Uh, no. Um, uh, the spindle should never be running while you're uh, near the fourth axis, uh, wh wh while your hand's near that part and all. Um, you, would, you, you keep your machine running, but your spindle is off and everything so great questions uh and that's what we're going to wrap up with those questions uh burl let's go ahead and uh let's show one little final uh image of what that laser has done up to this point and um you froze up so don't uh get away from there let it uh catch up bro your camera froze all right let's see if i can bring him into full of view his uh, camera froze up. He's gonna it's gonna pop him out for a second while he gets it back on track. Yes, uh, a barley twist bit is great for uh, barley cuts and things like that. Uh, those are um, you know uh, really good barley twist bits. I have rope twist bits, barley twist bits. I've got beading bits. All these things make it great for doing like you know different ornamental cutting on the fourth axis and stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know about you guys and girls, your bit preferences and things. And, uh, we sell bits, but we don't sell a lot of specialty bits like that. I'm a big magnate.net, uh, kind of fan when it comes to those rope twists and barley twists and things. Hey, Burl, welcome back. Um, yeah. all right. So you're going to show the final touch up of that, uh, digital wood carver engraving. Yeah. It says we've only got, uh, less than a minute here so we can finish up on it and make our last comments or if anybody's got any last questions we'll kind of wrap it up for today uh when it comes to that but we're about finished doing that last leg there it's doing uh, that i didn't want to wrap around the d uh and everything that's what it's doing there so uh it, it's uh moving along and it's going to be a little less than a minute till it's done so guys and girls uh burl and i are going to um Start our normal sign off. I do not see any more questions. I think, bro, we did good. We answered all the questions that came across. Uh, I do want to, uh, I'm going to kind of throw myself onto the screen. Uh, no, actually, I'm not. I'm going to bring that back up to so Burl can show that back. Let's go back to solo mode. All right, Burl, catch the laser off there. And oh, it's got to trace it. Oh, yeah, it's got to do the trace cut. It cleans up the edges when it's done. So it's doing that final cleanup of the edge and everything, which is great. Love that. All right, shuts it off. Uh, the laser automatically came back home. Router backed off, uh, and uh, the spindle went back home as well. So Burl will rotate that spindle uh, so we can see that engraving. And uh, 
bro that looked pretty good man that looks really good don't 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 good uh uh really really good and so you see that first part of the wood that was my high power not the correct setting right burl was able to adjust yes and uh then boom that d carver came out perfect and the digital as well uh but uh that's where you test cut you know guys and girls that's what all this is about get your set setting and adjustments and all tuned in so that way uh you can you can uh tune into those things uh burl is swinging back around all right burl i'm gonna bring myself up on the screen and i just want to say a couple of quick things before you say your goodbyes and all uh ladies and gentlemen uh, please, uh, if you liked these videos or like these videos, give us a thumbs up on the video. Uh, it really helps the channel and everything. And also, uh, I want to thank, we, we're over, we, we, I just created this new digital, this is our new 2020 Digital Woodcarver channel. And uh, we are just started when we started these live broadcasts. We've got 100 and something, uh, 120 or something subscribers now. It's building up and everything. You know, we have subscribers on our other channels and all, but this new channel is so definitely subscribe to this digital woodcarver channel. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know you like it. Uh, be sure to add comments in the comment section. If you do have questions and all, we look at those and answer them and uh, hit those notification bell uh, on there. So you're notified when live videos like this come, but just when it comes to those live videos, we do have videos every Wednesday. However, if I'm not mistaken, Burl, uh, we are going to not have one next week. Is that a true statement? We, yeah, we're going to probably skip a week here. Um, just a lot of things going on. Um, we went. One of the things we wanted to do was cover some of the major components, meaning uh, machines, uh, the the eight twenty or eighteen by twenty four and the twenty four forty, and a lot of these major accessories, uh, and kind of did that. So uh, we're going to probably give ourselves a little bit of a break uh, next week, and we'll try to in two weeks. Um, you know, do another one. Um, the 5100 is something that we haven't focused on. We got some other areas that we could uh, do, uh, maybe even go back and do uh, some of the accessories or some unique turnings or m unique uh, projects uh, we might do. So for those of you that are new to Digital Wood Carver, the 5100 is our is our big boy. It's our it's our four by eight CNC machine. So that would be cool to show that off, Earl. Uh, you know, one of the you know, uh, in episodes we have. Uh, 2440 around, you know, when we're showing something, one of the accessories I would like to show that doesn't get enough love. Uh, I don't even think it, uh, yeah, it's on the website, I think. But our drawer, do we still make our drawer or not? Uh, the front drawer and the first <laughs> one, or is that, is that uh, removed? We still make them. We still got it. We got to get that on our website. Um, <laughs> we actually have a, a stack of them down uh, yeah. in the factory there. When yeah. when Terry made those and and produced them, yes, we got to get that on there. Uh, like the wide finger joint, uh, you know, we showed that last week. We still don't have that on the website. So, uh, well, let me. Uh, yeah, me there's a uh, drawer real quick, guys and girls. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those of you that have a DWC twenty four forty, uh, I'm gonna talk Burl into uh, showing off that drawer one day when we when we on these live videos and maybe giving a small discount on that order. It is a great computer stand. It mounts right to the uh, end of the digital 2440. It's got a nice hole for uh, tools, pens, pens, whatever you want to put in there, junk drawer. Uh, it's, it's, it's for setting your laptop or computer on, uh, and uh, it never gets enough love. So we uh, can talk bro into a small discount on, and uh, you know, for you 2440 out there and stuff for that drawer. It's a great accessory. Burl, go ahead and uh, let's say our uh, closing statements. I'll let you start and then I'll end and we'll say good night for the evening. Well, guys uh, and ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun tonight. Um, you know, we we tried some stuff new. Uh, I always like to do that. It doesn't bother me if it goes uh, wrong, but uh, it was fun. Uh, we enjoy doing those things on the fly. I told Laney to start off with that, you know, the laser just isn't going to happen tonight. And uh, end up after I was turning it, and the thing, the the uh, piece turned nice and around. I thought, you know what, we'll just do something. But uh, anyhow, it turned out great. Uh, guys, girls, uh, have a good evening. Stay safe. Um, you know, when it comes to that. And thanks for coming out this evening, and joining with us. Oh yeah, thank you guys. And uh, uh, in my closing statements, like I said, you know, if you're new here, subscribe to the Digital Wood Carver YouTube channel. 
uh, or, or the, yeah, the Digital Wood Carver YouTube channel. Uh, give us a like and everything. It really helps the channel and stuff. It, it, it helps us uh, grow and everything. Um, I do want to uh, basically, uh, as I'm saying my closing statement, I do want to show off that drawer that mounts to the front of the 2440 right there. Uh, it's a pretty cool accessory. Maybe we'll talk Burl into that one day. Uh, but um, just for those of you that do follow Digital Wood Carver and all related, Spindle TV is related. We're not, you know, it's two entities, but we are related. We support one another. Uh, next yeah. week, uh, this week in the shop, we're finishing up the dovetail box. Uh, we cut dovetails on the joint maker jig this past week. Uh, we're finishing up the lid and everything. But next week, we're doing a fourth axis project. So if you really like this demo, Join me next Tuesday when we design a fourth axis project in the Vetric software. And then Thursday night when we actually go out, set up the machine for fourth axis and carve that project. So check that out next week. It'll be great. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us, uh, sticking with us. Thanks for the great questions, bro. Thank you as always. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Uh, let me uh, real quick. Yes, the drawer can mount on the back of the unit as well as the front because you have your joint maker jig on the front. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>